start, gentlemen. We're going to need all of the horror host up here. And my minions, because Bob, you have to clean up after everybody. Okay. So this is true, everyone's a little suspicious. Okay, we're going to uh, make this real quick. Uh, no disrespect intended, but uh, we feel like we saved the best for last. And we are going to be inducting as our second behind the screen award, the one and only Horace J. Ackerman. Now, of course, as everybody knows, Corey Ackerman was the uh, driving and creative force behind Famous Monsters magazine, and it was a magazine that I'm sure all monster kids ever read, and it influenced them, and Corey was uh, such a wonderful person, influenced people like Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, Joe Dante, um, the, the magazine was incredible, and uh, I just we could keep going on and on about him, but I just want to say one personal thing. I actually got to visit the Acker back in 1996. I had my five-year-old daughter with me, and Forey really took a shine to her. So I never wrote to his magazine because I figured, eh, this guy is never going to, you know, talk to me. I'm, you know, some kid out in Jersey, whatever. Well, one day when we came back, my daughter was on the phone, and as five-year-olds like to answer. And I heard her going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So I said, who are you talking to? And she goes, I'm talking to Uncle Ford. I'm like, no, you're not. I grabbed the phone away from her. Sure enough, it was Uncle Ford. Unbeknownst to me, she had given him my phone number. And I have to say that he called her once a week for, for months and months. Didn't want to talk to me. Didn't want to talk to her. But that just goes to show you what, how, how giving the man was. And he took time out for everybody. So. Just want to say thank you, Uncle Forey. Rest in peace. I would just like to say my personal Forey Ackerman story. When uh, Suspira and I here were married, up in Cleveland, the Cinema Wasteland, Forey Ackerman sent us a personal greeting, was read by our good friend Remo D. And uh, that, that just, it, it made me cry. You know, I'm a weepy bitch, it made me cry. <laughs> and now, over to Captain Grip. Oh, I get to pull that. Yeah, you got, you, you got there? Oh, all right, oh, are we, where are we going? We're we going to Dale? My uh, one and only meeting with Corey was at the first Lardy Fest in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I was dying to meet the guy. He influenced me throughout my whole life. I read his magazines. So who ends up talking to him? Just like in Jack's case, my wife. <laughs> he saw her admiring his rings, and he told her the story about the Boris Karloff uh, mummy ring and the Dalla Gosi Dracula ring, and how he obtained them, and, and uh, that's the kind of guy he was. He just he would talk to anyone, whether they were a horror fan or not. So we are very, very proud to induct Forrest Jackman into the 2014 Horror Host Hall of Fame. Let's hear it for Forrest! Thank you very much, everybody, for attending and, and for putting up with us on our works. And uh, thank you very much. And who's going to take us out? We're going to take ourselves out. Hello, Bela. <laughs> you see, I'm. I'm wearing your ring. You remember giving it to Richard Sheffield? He was a great acolyte of yours. And toward the end of your life, you realized you couldn't take it with you, so you let him have the ring. And after you were gone, Dick really treasured this ring, but he came to realize if I would have the ring, then it would be constantly on display. Every time I was interviewed, uh, they would feature it in magazines and newspapers. Similarly with the, the cape. He gave that cape to young Sheffield, and Sheffield in turn gave it to me. I had seen you, Bela wearing that cape on the stage doing Dracula in San Francisco 
And you may remember you wore it for the very last time in Ed Wood's Plan 9 from outer space. You know, Bela, I've known Cortland Hull since he was a teenager, and I watched him create the witch's dungeon, and now he is morphing it into the Silver Screen Museum and Archives, and you will be perpetuated there along with Boris Karloff and Henry Hull, the werewolf of London, Lon Chaney, the Phantom of the Opera. They'll all live on in Cortland Hull's Silver Screen Movie Museum.